test-driven development just doesn't click. TDD is the wrong way round for my brain. TDD is hard. Yet when you think about it, that makes no sense. It must be easier to write tests for code that is designed to be testable than trying to retrofit them afterwards to untestable code. Logically then, test first is easier than test after. So why do so many developers completely fail to do test-driven development? And what can you do about it? Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer, creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to the Modern Software Engineering channel. If you enjoy the video today, please do hit like and consider subscribing. We are several presenters here with a common goal to bring you great advice on the technical aspects of software engineering. So, some technical advice then. Test-driven development. It may have the word test in the name, but fundamentally this is an approach to software development, not particularly testing. Software development is hard, even with a Gen AI assistant. In fact, I found the best results with a Gentic AI when I'm following a test-driven development process and mindset. So Canon TDD says, first you formulate a test list. You begin with the first item, write a test for it, see it fail, write just enough code to make it pass, refactor, improve the design, repeat. Now, this kind of sounds simple, but it's kind of not. There are at least four skills there in that sequence of four things, one of which is design an executable test case that fails. Dig a little deeper and you'll realize that all the other three skills are also pretty broad and encompass a lot of additional skills. So if we take that first one, design an executable test case that fails, you need to choose a suitable test name, express in code your intention for the particular behavior you want to exercise, design testable interfaces so you can trigger this behavior, listen to the design feedback from the test and adjust, and more. I mean, TDD is not just one skill, it's made up of many micro skills. And I use that word to mean a technique or a heuristic that quite often has a name, that it takes skill to perform correctly and good judgment to identify when it would be relevant to do it that way. So for any given coding situation, you need to be proficient with a lot of micro skills. And TDD in particular encompasses a great deal of these. It's quite overwhelming when you think about it. On the screen now, I've put some classic books by well-known authors about test-driven developments and related skills. And if you look through what they are covering, each one has many named patterns or heuristics. I counted a about 200 in just these four books. And then, of course, other than that, that many other people have adapted and built on their work to come up with TDD advice for specific languages and tools and situations. And then I haven't even started talking about general design patterns for object-oriented or functional programming, because good design skills are actually really central to good TDD. It's hard to learn a practical skill just by reading books. And test-driven development often isn't something that's explicitly taught. New graduate developers will have the basics of programming already, and there are a lot of practical skills they need to learn on the job. So let's take an example of a programming skill that most people learn pretty early on in their career. How to find and use an open source library. I mean, we do this all the time. You need a new logging framework or a Kafka client or a JSON parser or something. You may not even think of this as a skill because you've totally internalized it, but I could break it down into some micro skills. Identify a problem a library could solve for you. Search around the internet and choose a suitable open source package. Select the right version, add it as a dependency to your project. And then get some example code from Stack Overflow or the tutorial or whatever and adapt it to work in your situation. I mean, actually these days, you'd ask your AI coding assistant to do half of this stuff for you. But even so, you are using a lot of judgment and skill in that process of getting that library in place and working for you. So getting and using a new code library are useful micro skills, but they don't actually overlap that much with the skills you need for test-driven development. I already said that writing the test afterwards is actually harder, 
because the design is usually not very testable. But people do find it easier. And that is actually because you can use those coding skills you already have. Exactly that one I just explained, adopting a new library. You use a mocking framework. That's how you test code with untestable designs because of awkward dependencies. You learn to use mocks. And actually, that skill is quite a short step from what you already know how to do. Writing tests for an implementation that doesn't yet exist needs a bunch of micro skills that you probably don't have. And that is one reason why TDD is hard to adopt. Lots of these micro skills are kind of unique to that situation and you won't have needed them before. So what are these micro skills and how do you learn them? Well, I'm gonna say more about that in a moment. But first I'd like to pause and thank our sponsors. Equal Experts, Transfic, MailTrap. We are grateful for all of these companies' support so that we can keep making these videos. And they're not just random software companies. These are ones that we've chosen because they're relevant for people in software like we are. So do check out their links in the show notes. Back to micro skills and TDD. Just recently, I was coaching this team and they wanted to use test driven development. They were going to develop a new area of functionality and they already had good design skills and they knew how to write test cases, but they weren't really familiar with writing those first. So I, I helped them with this and we, we broke the problem down and made a reasonable test list. And then we started to actually write the first test case and the team just got stuck. They couldn't do the micro skill that I call clarifying the intent for this test case. That involves explaining what the behavior should be before the implementation exists. So I was able to step in at this point and guide them through using a template with code comments. It's a process that I've used many times now to teach this micro skill. You, you write plain English words expressing the intent of the test in this structured format with comments. And once you've described that intent, it's much easier to go on and actually write the code. So when we'd done that, I would hand back to the team and they were able to go on and finish writing that test code before the implementation existed using the design micro skills they already had. This kind of situation is not that unusual for when I'm coaching a team that they get stuck on some part of TDD. So I, I will step in briefly, lead that work and help them through it and then hand back control to them as soon as I can. Ideally, I'll also schedule an upcoming learning hour where we'll walk through the same micro skill and use it in an exercise so that they really start to understand and remember what it is and how to do it when I'm not there. I see learning test-driven development as a long process of gaining mastery of many micro skills. And I found Marion Hartman's Green Path skill acquisition model really insightful for understanding how this happens. Now Hartman is an instructional designer, which means she invents learning strategies and materials, not particularly for software. Her green path model explains the stages you normally go through when learning any practical skill. And I'm taking a lot of inspiration from her right now, especially when I'm teaching TDD with teams. Basically, there's this one stage in the learning process Hartman calls it solo, when you can do a skill on your own as long as it's using micro skills that you already know. And you can even fill in a gap if the problem you're facing only requires one new micro skill and you've got a bit of time to work it through. But if you're a bit stressed or a particular problem requires too many new micro skills, then you get stuck. And unfortunately, many people learning TDD face that situation and they just drop it. They go back to doing it how they did before, without tests or, or writing the tests afterwards. Now, ideally, you'd be able to ask for help in that situation. You'd be able to get a colleague to come and pair with you through that difficult patch, and they would be able to fill in enough missing micro skills that you can cover that and get it done. Now, if you're listening to this and thinking, well, I haven't got a colleague or a technical coach or someone who knows TDD who I can ask, then I want to point you at some other useful resources. Now I've got this free guide to my must learn core refactorings, which are actually all micro skills that are widely applicable in test driven development and software development in general that are well worth learning. So go to the show notes and find the link to get your free copy. 
Then there are all these code carters that I've published on my GitHub and elsewhere. Code carters are great because they help you to gain fluency with micro skills. With a simpler problem to work on, your brain has got more capacity left to figure out how to work in this unfamiliar way. And by repeating the micro skills and doing TDD, they start to become habits that take less mental effort and you're more likely to be able to use them in harder situations. I want you to see test-driven development not as one thing to learn, but many skills and techniques and heuristics for software development, including general design skills, because that framing makes it easier to understand why it's difficult and what to do about it. Most developers find TDD hard because although you can learn the first few basic micro skills in perhaps a few hours, you can easily get stuck when you lack the other micro skills that you need for a more complex situation. And it's very easy just to give up. Test last needs fewer micro skills and ones that you're more likely to already know, like how to use a library for mocking. Think of TDD as a pile of hundreds of little things that you need to learn, which will probably take a whole career to master. Aim to get a critical mass of crucial basic micro skills to cover the common situations and find a way to get help when you get stuck. Happy coding!